A year ago, I had the privilege of uh, going back to where I grew up in Singapore when I went over as a kid. Um, and my wife, my wonderful wife, Carol, and I, we spent our 50th anniversary there. Um, I actually we went back there primarily for an uh, evangelistic series uh, that I was working with there at the time. And then we had several weeks, went up to Penang and uh, at the hospital where I did some performing. And so we had a wonderful time there. I have a wonderful family, both my kids and my wife, and I've been very fortunate. I remember when we first um, came out here, we had packed my VW camper. We were on our way driving from the East Coast all the way out to California. On the way out, we decided to take a little side trip and uh, visit New York City, do some sightseeing. So I remember we stopped by the Empire State Building. <clears throat> it was Sunday afternoon, and I found a spot. Um, it said no parking, but I thought, well, on Sunday, they don't, they don't, wouldn't, you know, it was, it was all okay to do it. So I went up to the top to see if it was open, and uh, I went to, I didn't go all the way up to the top, but I went and I said it was open. So I came back, told my family, I said, let's go on up for a few minutes and get a view from the Empire State Building. So we locked the van and went up, and I hadn't been up there more than about 15 minutes, and I said, you know, I don't feel comfortable leaving the van there by itself, and I said, I'm going to go back down. So I went down, unlocked the van, went in, sat down, and then I noticed some things had been moved. I looked around, and then to my horror, I was shocked. My violin case was missing. Two beautiful fiddles were in there with some bows worth thousands and thousands of dollars. And I, I couldn't believe it. It was like a shock that came over me. Well, when my family came down, I told them what had happened. That someone had broken in and, and, locked, <laughs> and locked it again and taken clothes and a bunch of other stuff, that personal things. So we stayed, um, my wife's uh, brother was living there at the time, we stayed an extra day, and I went around looking at pawn shops to see if somebody had taken the violins and was to, was to you know, try to unload it, but to no avail. So I reported it to the police, and it was with a heavy, heavy heart that we drove out to California. No violin. Well, when I got out here, um, I prayed about it. I said, Lord, you know where that violin is. Who has it? You know, it, it would be a miracle to get that back again, you know. And day after day, week after week, month after month, I prayed. I said, Lord, where is that violin? Please work a miracle. Finally, after two years, I gave up. I said, okay, I'll accept the lesson. Don't be such a fool and leave something like that in the streets of any city. Hard lesson to learn. And I remember um, it was just about Christmas time, just before Christmas, and I suddenly had the impulse, I was going to pray one more time. I said, Lord, this is Christmas time. I said, I want one more chance. Try to find my violin. I remember praying about that very sincerely and deeply because the violin, that violin was like my right arm, you know, it was just incredible sound. The very next morning, I got a phone call from a violin dealer because we had reported it. It said, I think we might have your instrument here. You need to come out and identify it. So I was couldn't believe, you know. But then I said, oh, th thank you, Lord. I know it's my violin, you know. So I um, bought a plane ticket, went out as soon as I could. I had to go to the police station because they had to be with me to identify it. And everything was seeming in slow motion. The, the guy was driving so slowly, the detective. When I told him about this violin, he says, you mean you lost a violin two years ago? He said, that's like a needle in a haystack to find it. He says, there are 50,000 cars stolen in New York City every year. And you're talking about a violin that shows up? He said he couldn't believe it. So we got to the Vadilo's place, 
the elevator was out of order, so we went up on the uh, service elevator, and that was so slow, so slow, so slow. I got to the top, there was a line of people waiting the line, I could hardly wait. So I got up there, I introduced myself, the guy went back into the room, he came out, and it was wrapped in a blanket or a towel. He set it on the counter and opened it up, and I looked at it, and I instantly recognized it. I said, yes, that's my lost violin. And I said, how did you get it? He says, well, a young fellow came in here and tried to sell it for $600, and he said, I know it was worth, you know, even more than 6000 So he said, wait here, I need to check, see, this might be a stolen violin. So he took the violin back with him in the back room. When he came back out, the young fellow had disappeared and left. So the guy was trying to sell it, and that's how it showed up in the violin dealer's shop. So after all these years. So anytime, every time I play it, I'm, I'm, I think about those that day, you know, over 30 years ago, and it's still, still functioning well. Now the other violin was missing, but the one that really mattered to me was this violin. And his voice is silent for two years, and now I could use it again to perform. And I, again, I feel that was a direct answer to prayer, because the very next day I got that call. So never, never give up. Pray without ceasing. Have faith. Now, it may not always happen the way, answer the way we want, but we still need to remember that God does answer our prayers.